It's the perfect time of year to start establishing some new trees in your landscape, but one of the things that, that I look at as a plant pathologist are some of our common disease problems that we have that can affect some of our trees and, and just by some simple selection you can avoid a lot of problems in the future as that tree gets established. So when we're looking at uh, things like you know flowering crab apples or, or particularly like apple trees or fruit trees it's very important to look for those common diseases that we have and, and some sort of resistance to them. So just for example with our flowering crab apples we commonly have scab every year in Nebraska. So make sure you're selecting those cultivars that have good tolerance or resistance to scab. Another one that we see, we see those also in our fruit trees. You know, we're gonna see things like uh, fire blight that, affects, that can affect apple trees. And even some of our, our selections where we look at even some of the flowering pears, for example, we can see fire blight in those. So that's another one to look for some resistance to. Uh, also, when we're looking at our, our fruit trees, especially, when we're looking at some of the rust diseases. So cedar apple rust, very common in Nebraska. So make sure you're having or selecting a apple uh, cultivar that has resistance to rust. The other thing that we look at when we're, we're trying to position these trees in the landscape is where are they at in reference to other possible hosts for some of those diseases, particularly our rust diseases. So we know that if we put a juniper, for example, close proximity to an apple tree that's susceptible to cedar apple rust, that's going to create an environment that's, that's significant for common disease that's going to occur very frequently. So just make sure that you know, you're positioning those types of trees in your landscape correctly and making sure you have some resistance, uh, particularly to the flowering crabs, uh, the apple trees, uh, and then we're going to talk next a little bit about some of our evergreen species. Now when we're looking at evergreen species and, and trying to uh, evaluate those for potential problems in the future, there's a few common diseases that we want to avoid. Uh, particularly with our, our spruce, for example, we'll see rhizosphere needle cast. I know on the entomology side they can see some spider mite issues as well. Uh, so make sure that, that you're positioning those trees appropriately and you're picking maybe out of the categories of spruce some that are less susceptible. Another example of a common uh, evergreen disease that we would see in Nebraska is pine wilt. So at this point, you know, we really don't recommend planting scotch pine, for example, for a long-term tree in the landscape. If you're looking for something for maybe a 10-year window, uh, that's going to be fine, but I wouldn't recommend any scotch pine. Uh, if you're looking at more of an extended period or wanting a large tree out of that. Now some of the other common ones that we see, you know, some of our uh, other juniper species, uh, when we're looking at white pine, that can be a fairly sensitive species and we can see some problems with that. Uh, so you want to be careful on positioning with that tree. Uh, and then also some of your other evergreens, even some of your juniper species, we can see some common diseases. And like I mentioned earlier, we can see that cycle with cedar apple rust. So avoiding those junipers, you know, in close proximity to any of your, your fruit trees that are susceptible to rust. So just overall, if, if you're looking at your tree species, when you're looking at establishment and trying to make sure that, that you're making those selections so you can avoid significant disease problems in the future, uh, and make sure that you've got species that are giving you that great aesthetic value that you're looking for.